Hello everybody, Peggy here. I'm back again with another project. Today I am making a simple bookmark. Just thought I'd show you guys how to do it. It's fun, it's easy, it's quick. It's a great way to use up scrap. Um, I'm just gonna get right to it because I want. there's a couple of things I wanna show you that might be also helpful tips and tricks as we go because we know I, we know I love to turn a five minute video into a two hour lecture. So buckle up, get ready, we'll get started. And we're gonna make a quick little, um, we're gonna make a quick little bookmark. So here we go. And here I am. So this is gonna be a pretty simple project. It's a bookmark. I have right now, um, I'm pretty sure there's already been a little pop-up that's given the dimensions and everything I'm using. So I've got three pieces of fabric, they're all the same. This one I've already folded in half and ironed. This is a small piece of interfacing. You can use interfacing or you can use, um, like if you don't have interfacing, you can just take an extra piece of fabric and just use that as a, as a lining. You don't have to use interfacing, that's just what I'm using today. So you can use an extra piece of scrap fabric, you can use um, uh, broadcloth, you can use um, left, you know, a piece of a t-shirt, anything. You can leave it out, you don't have to do this part if you don't want to. I like it, it makes it a little stiffer. This is not a complicated or difficult project. So you guys are going to have fun with this. This is also, I'm just going to play with everything as I talk. This is also a project, if you're doing stuff by hand, this is a good project to do. I do want to show you guys one trick though before I get started. I wanted to give you guys, I wanted to, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about selecting the right fabric for the right project. So I've chosen this one, this pink one here for the project. And I didn't choose this one for a reason. So we're going to get into that. It's only going to take a minute. You know me, I take a five minute project and turn it into a two hour video. So bear with me. So when you are picking fabric, you want to make sure that I'm looking at a piece of fabric that's this big, but I want to make something that's going to be ultimately like, well, it's going to be about that big when it's done. So, uh, so when you're picking these fabrics, sometimes you'll come across some really beautiful designs that you just can't use. And the best way to spot them is to just kind of like, sometimes I'll just go like that or imagine, well, how small am I going to use it? In this case, this happens to be see-through to a degree. So what I will do is I will, if I, like, if I know that I've got a really thin fabric or something that I can see through easily, or um, another thing that you can do in this case would just be to take my ruler and just put my arm over the top and go, oh, um, you can even just, you know, imagine, imagine it, imagine it. Okay. So if you find, do what you can to figure out what it's going to look like when it's done. Because what I found out almost immediately is that this fabric is nice and bright. I, I would have preferred to use this fabric because it's, it's nice, bright, easier to look at. And I'm not, I'm allergic to pink. So, but when I went like that, I realized that I would be lucky. There's just not a lot to work with. Because, pardon me, because we're going to be having, the way the, the way the fabric is going to be, these are small pieces. The way these fabric, the way these pieces are going to go together it's not probably not going to look very good. So keep an eye on um, keep an eye on the size of the pattern itself as you're doing it. Just a small little just a small little thing and a couple of small little hints because when you take your ruler and you go, oh, it's going to be this tall by this wide. You can see exactly what it is. And again, just 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 a guesstimate, just a guesstimate with your hands. I mean, I, there's not a full kitty face in any in in that. Anyway, that's just um, that's just a little something to keep in mind when you're selecting fabric. I've got a I've got a couple of fabrics that have got such big designs that I could that I could cut all of this and still not be completely through the design. And, and, and yeah, that's just the first little thing. Just to, just like I said, to keep in mind, it's not the end of the world. This is a really simple project. So you have two pieces of fabric. This is. What was the minimum on that that I said four by okay this this piece of interface this is a this piece of lining if you are going to use a lining if you are going to use a, use a lining your lining needs to be three inches by seven inches okay the rest of your thing needs to be four inches by eight inches one extra inch all the way around for both of these and this is your I have to look all this up, guys. I literally sat here, put it all, got everything ready, and then went, whatever, this is four inches by 
Let me just double check. This is a four inch by 10 inch piece of fabric that is, and I already went ahead, I cheated. I went ahead and I folded it in half and, and sewed it, okay? And so yeah, I already cut these. So these three are all the same width. These three are all four inches wide by 10 inches by eight, by 10 inches by eight inches by eight inches. So you, your two eight inch pieces are sitting over here. Your 10 inch piece is sitting over here. And now some, now depending on what you do or don't like, you can use two pieces of this. I'll explain that in a minute as I go, or, or you can just use none, or you can use a piece of scrap. This is gonna be, this is gonna be getting ironed on to one of these. So if you don't have it, if you do not have interfacing of any kind, you can use a piece of scrap. If you use a piece of scrap, you'll want it to be the same. If you're gonna use, a, if you're gonna use interfacing, it needs to be four by, what did I say again? Four by seven, three by seven. If you're using interfacing, it needs to be three inches by seven inches. If you're using any other type of a lining, then it needs to be the same size as these. It's not difficult, but that's, that's where we're at. So I have a second little trick to show you. Hope you guys didn't get seasick while I was moving that over here. Second trick to show you is the interfacing. Interfacing has glue dots. Sometimes they can be difficult to see. Sometimes they can be difficult to feel. This, the, the side with the glue will feel a little bit bumpy. The side without the glue will feel smooth. And you're just going to center it, eyeball it, that's fine, onto the center of your fabric. And you're going to iron it down. Most inter most iron-on, okay, there's, you do, there is sew-on interfacing, and if that's the case, you would place your interfacing and just sew it on all the way around. Most iron-on interfacings, let's get this out where you can see it. In videos, you're going to see people going, oh, boop, 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 and then they're going to go, nah, 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 nah. So I'm just going to explain what I'm doing. No steam. If you're if you have a steam iron, no steam. Place it over the top. Hold it down for a count of five to ten. This is on the cotton setting. For my particular interfacing, if yours has, look up what yours says. Okay. Some of the some interfacings are. So what I'm doing is I am picking this up and moving it and then putting it that back down. I am not dragging the iron back and forth across anything. That's the biggest thing. That's the biggest trick. And then you just make sure you do the whole thing. Iron it down. Some interfacings hold on better than others. This, I can literally get into it and peel it right back off again if it's not working. Uh, this is, uh, I'm not even sure the brand of this. I buy it in bulk, so I can never remember what brand it is. I just tell my guy, I need like a lot of this stuff and they just give me a lot of this stuff. Anyway, Look at the, look, watch the instructions that, that, watch the instructions that come with your interfacing, but for most of them, you're going to go press, lift, press. You're not, you're not doing this because what you will do is you will, you do that and you will roll all this stuff up and then it'll just be a bloody mess. And you're also not using steam. Um, unless the instructions that come with your interfacing specifically say to use a steam iron, most of the ones that I'm aware of don't want you to use steam. When you turn it over, you may find that it's got a little bit of creasing in it. So you can, at that point, lightly go over it, but it's very unlikely to cause you a lot of problems as long as you're picking up going down. Um, there is a step where you get to iron this with steam at the very, very end. So if you have some very light creasing, very, very light, like more like crinkling than, than an actual crease, then you can ignore it, but that's a whole separate video that I would have to do. Mm. So we're gonna make a little bit of a sandwich here. Now you've got choices, you've got choices. So this is now your, this goes, this goes on in a particular order because you're done marking your fabric. If you've used interfacing, you're done marking your fabric. So you go like that, you put this down, you line this up with the bottom then don't be afraid if it's don't be afraid if it's like off the bottom a little tiny bit, because I that one has a funny little mark in it. You do that. Now this one is going to have an elastic. If you do not want an elastic, and you would prefer to, some people like to do their bookmarks just with a loose tie at the top. And if that's how you want to do it, then skip this next step, and I will try to remember to get back to telling you what to do with that when you're there. This goes like that. This is a, this okay. This is going to be a wrap around that goes all the way around your all the way around your book. Um, 
and you'll see that at the end. And hopefully there's already been, hopefully there's already been a picture at some point popping up to show you what it looks like when it's finished, but I, I'm not there yet, so I can't take the picture. So this goes like that and just lay it down. Ideally, you want to center it. So what you want to do, because this is, you've got extra, look at, look at the extra that you've got. You've got extra on both sides. So to make sure that that gets centered, you're going to want to take your ruler. Do, 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 do. You're going to want to take all this stuff that I just messed with and get it out of the way. I should have done this part first. So there you go. There's no such thing as a mistake as long as you're willing to go back and fix it. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to find your halfway mark. You can also fold it. You don't have to mark it with a pen. Um, these are um, friction pens. So these are friction pens and they come off almost instantly with an iron. So I can mark these. But so now I've got that marked in the center. I've got my little center mark. So this is a, so I've got this back over here. This is a little bit of fiddling and it's not a big, not a big deal. So that goes there, that goes there. If you, let me back up, let me back up. If you are not using interfacing and have chosen to use a piece of scrap, then you will need to take your top piece of scrap and mark it, use, use, use the marking, just make a, make a three by make a line on your stuff, three, three inches, you know, just, just get a pen out and mark three by seven. What I'm doing here, because of the interfacing, it may not be as, it may not be very obvious to you, but it's very easy to see where this line is. And I'm going to be using that as, as the line that I'm going to sew along. If you are not using interfacing or if you are using a piece of scrap. So if you are not using interfacing, you will mark this piece of fabric with a three by seven inch square rectangle and mark the center at the bottom. If you're using a piece of scrap, then you're going to mark the piece of scrap because the scrap will have to be on the top. So if you are, where'd I put it? I had it. I have stuff, I throw away stuff. I'm so messy even when I'm trying to be clean and neat. Let me see, there it is. Okay, so let's just assume, let's assume I've got my interfacing, I'm good to go, but let's assume that you are doing scrap. So you're, you've got your piece of scrap. You're gonna lay your piece of scrap. This is gonna be your top. That's going on the top right here, eventually, right? So you would put this piece down. You would put, okay, I'm, okay, let me, let me do this in order. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay that down there. I'm gonna line up, I'm gonna eyeball it, but I'm gonna line up that line with the center of this elastic because that will, because, because that's gonna automatically center the elastic and as long as everything else drops into place, I'm done and I can pin it. So I'm gonna pin this for my own purposes because I know that I've done this right. I've got the elastic just ever so slightly out so I can just do that, pin it, get that pin in, mark it. Okay, let's assume, let's assume that you are not using interfacing and you've chosen instead to use a piece of scrap. When this is done, the interfacing is gonna be on the inside of everything where you never have to see it again. So that your scrap, the same thing, will be going on the top and it will have to go on the top where you will never see it again. So what you would have to do is take your, take your piece of scrap that is the same size and mark a three inch by seven inch all the way around, lay this stuff together, pretend the interfacing isn't there, lay that down, line this up with the, with the center of the elastic and then pin. I hope that made sense. If anybody has any questions about it, drop a comment in the, um, drop a comment below. I will try my best to answer and expand on this. I hope this makes sense. But once again, if you are using iron-on interfacing or, 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 okay, if you're using a sew-on interfacing, then you will have sewn on your interfacing already, basted it on and then mark the bottom and then put your pin in. This has got the interfacing, so I'm done. But if you are using a piece of scrap because you don't have or don't want to use interfacing, then you mark your scrap. If you are choosing not to have a lining at all, then you will have already marked this with a three inch by seven inch rectangle with the bottom marked. Just mark those down in order. You should be, you should be good to go. This is fine. This is fine. We're fine. Okay. I'm just gonna use a clip on the top. We're almost done. This is actually not a, not a difficult product project. Now what I've done here is I've made these intentionally wider. One thing, because instead of making this, instead of trimming this down exactly to size, pinning it all together, sewing it all together, 
and then trimming it again because that's what they'll tell you to do. I just made everything a little bit bigger. I'm going to sew it all up and then I'll trim it all in. Then I'll trim it. Then I'll do my final trimming all as one big step. So I'm going to turn the camera. I'm going to sew this up and you'll see what, you'll see what happens next. Now I'm going to take this out because to make it easier to work with for me, because it's just how my hand eye coordination works. But now that I've got it lined up on the machine and I have the advantage of having a, uh, a knee lift where I just move my leg. I got a big ass handle over here at the side and I just push it and the foot comes up. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to start here on this side of the elastic and you're going to sew all the way around and stop on that side of the elastic. It's really simple. Now, because of the way that this lines up, two things. I'm going to show you something right quick. I'm going to show you something else right quick. This is from another project that I was working on and I'm going to show you this because this is actually a spare piece. Interfacing rips off that easy. Depend certain brands. This is a brand. The brand that I use comes off really easy. So to avoid problems, what I'm going to do, it comes off really easy, but it also doesn't, it's, it's, this is going to, this is going to sound very, very finicky, but if you're using, if you're using an interfacing that removes that easily, that can tear off that easily, which is normal. It's normal if it can come off that easy. Just trust me there. If you're using a, if you're using an interfacing that comes off really, really easily, then what you will do is on the side that you, on the side where your opening is going to be, you're going to sew as close to the edge without sewing onto the interfacing as you can get. Backstitch, because um, this particular project has you pulling everything. You're going to be turning this inside right, right, inside right through a very narrow hole. So go ahead and backstitch to reinforce that opening so it doesn't like tear or um, unravel or do any weird things. And then we're just going to go around. We're going to sew, taking our time. Once we get to the corner, this is where it gets weird for me. And this is a, this is a this is a byproduct of my particular interfacing that I use. In order to make sure that it's not going to tear itself out while I'm flipping it, I am going to sew. I sewed in the top, just up to but not on the interfacing. And again, this this is this is instead of. You know, normally normally if you're not using interfacing, you're going to have a nice line to follow. Right. If you're using a friction, if you're using a friction pen, you'll be following the line that you've drawn on. I'm just following this edge because I already know that it's exactly where I want to be. Let me just over explain that five more times. Now I won't do that to you guys. It's fine. So now I am sewing just, just barely onto the interfacing so I can catch it so that if anything loosens, I don't have to worry about anything coming loose while I'm turning it. And I'm just going to sew down that side. Coming down to the bottom. Now, what I'm also going to do on the bottom, I don't have to, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to stay, I'm going to take out my pin, and I'm going to continue to stay just, and I mean like I'm less than an eighth of an inch. I'm, I'm barely on the edge. This is the only reason why I'm catching any of the interfacing is to make sure that when I'm turning it inside out, that all the tugging and pulling doesn't rip out the interfacing from the fabric, because that can just be, I, I did, I turned one. I, I did a couple of others earlier, like, like earlier in the week and I turned one and the interfacing pulled right out into my hand because I thought I had caught it and I hadn't. Anyway, if your interfacing comes out super easily. So now I'm going along the bottom. I'm going to sew along the entire bottom. Now that I've come to the elastic, I'm, I like to reinforce when and where I can. So I'm going to just backstitch a little bit on the left side and again on the right side of that elastic. Do, 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 do. This is actually a pretty simple project. I'm almost done. It's it's um it's not difficult at all. Where'd my oh I'm missing something. That's okay. I'll have to, oh no, I'm not. There it is. <gasps> the most important tool. I'm gonna show you how to use one of the most important tools that you can have in your sewing room. Okay, I'm just being all dun dun dun. I'm being all mysterious because I can get away with it because you guys want to see how this works so you can make one for yourself. So what I noticed, what I noticed is, like I said, it, when you're doing a small project like this, it's really tempting to get everything nice and close. You're only, you only need a quarter inch seam. You only need a quarter inch seam all the way around, but if something, if something shifts even a little bit, then everything's all wacky and then you've got less than a quarter inch seam. You've got a You've got difficult seams. This is, I find that if I make my, whatever, whatever it is that I want the finished product to be, I want my finished product and I want my quarter inch seams. And then I just added an extra inch 
to make sure that I was going to have the space I needed so that I didn't need to go all the way forward like that to make sure that I had the space I needed so that when I was doing my turning and flipping and all that stuff, I wasn't going to wreck anything. The most important tool in any sewing room is a chopstick. Just trust me. Okay. So because I, because I do this my own way, I, I marched to the beat of my own drummer. Um, because I did this my own way, I will have to go around and either use a rotary cutter or carefully cut with scissors and just reduce this back into approximately a quarter of an inch. But what I'm, I'm also, what I'm also going to do is I'm also going to leave what's called a turn tab. Um, what people sometimes do, and like again, I'm just, I'm just cutting this to about a quarter of an inch. I'm cutting, I'm cutting at the corners. I'm not cutting, I'm not, I'm not touching the stitching. I'm staying out a little bit. And then I'm going to a about a quarter of an inch down the bottom here, taking all that out. The reality is, is that no matter how carefully you cut this to begin with, you're going to be coming back and trimming. So if you have the extra cloth to give yourself a little extra space to start with and mark your fabric, that because if you, if you do the quarter inch all the way around, you don't have to mark your fabric, but if you mark your fabric and give yourself more space, it's just a lot easier to work with. You do get a bit more, you get a, do get a little bit more um, scrap when you're done, a little bit more, a little bit more um, waste. And as you get more practice and get better, like when I first started making stuff like this, I had like, I was using like a nine inch square and taking this out of the center. Like, don't be afraid to do it any, any way you want to do it. So this, I'm going to leave what's called, I'm leaving, I'm leaving this long. I'm leaving this piece on the front and this piece on the back long because once I flip this through and you'll see in a second, a lot of people call this a turn tab. I never really, I just said, leave some extra. That's just all I've ever said. So make sure you cut off your excess threads. There we go. Okay. Now I'm just going to give this a light, a light tug. I've got interfacing on one side, so it's stiff. I've got no interfacing on this side, so it's a little softer. So I'm going to give it a little tug. And then I'm going to get down on this end and kind of start pushing it in a bit. Honestly, just do whatever works. There's no rules. This is what I do if it helps. Oh, the camera's not going to show it. Let's get this camera up here. Okay. So ignore the mess. I've got stuff to do. So once I get this, once I get this like this, I put the chopstick on the table below me and I just kind of take my time, hold everything in place lightly, do do do, get it started, do do do, do do do, do do do, come on, come on. This usually gets, it's fiddly and then it just goes. Oh, come on. There we go. Yeah, it's fiddly and then it just goes and then you just go, just push, continue to push, continue to push. Pick it up, leave it against the table, do whatever you want to do, and you have a big ass mess. Let's get the camera just to change. Let's just get the camera back in a better spot. Okay, there we go. Let's bounce the camera around all over the place. You guys like that? Okay. Okay. So this is almost done. Almost done. Almost done. Okay. So I just use my fingers a little bit. I don't go crazy. Get that chopstick back in there. Now, just give everything a little light tug. You're not going crazy. Now, when you're poking it, when you're poking out your corners, one thing that people tend to do is they tend to they tend to angle into the corner and push. And if you push hard enough, you will force your way. There's only a couple stitches holding it there. So what you want to do is you want to kind of come in from the top to the bottom, and then from the side to the outside. I don't know how to describe this. You're not instead of coming in like this with your chopstick and you could potentially force your chopstick, whatever you're using as your turning tool, you could potentially force it through. So just wiggle a bit so you're coming in more or less from the top, more or less from the bottom. You'll still poke out your corner, but you'll have less chance. You can. You can actually, if you're pushing hard enough or distracted enough or, or whatever, um, or you can also get in here like this and then, like, let, like, whoops, get in, here, get in here like this and then lever it to the outside. I'm trying to stay in the camera so you guys can see what I'm doing. There's not really a lot to see. This is just all. And then when I'm done, when I'm done, I'm going to put my, I'm going to put the chopstick in like this. And I'm going to push up and I'm going to pull all the way back because we've got to get that crease in there. 
It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just saving me from the pressure of overworking my hands. Sometimes, I don't know if you've, if any, anybody who's ever had a reason to sit down and do a whole lot of sewing like in a day or something like that, and you're done and you go, why do my hands hurt so much? Well, they hurt because you're doing this. You're in here like this and you're pinching and you're twisting. It's working, it's working beautifully, but that's a lot of pressure to put on, that's a surprising amount of pressure to put on your hands so you can really just wear your hands out. So again, I'm scraping, I'm, I'm literally, I'm scraping up the side. I think, I hope I'm staying in the camera enough. I gotta make sure I'm, I gotta make sure I'm doing it right while trying to keep it where you guys can see it. And then that's that, you're done. Okay, you're not done. Now, you don't have to iron this, but I'm gonna go back to the iron. So I'm just gonna take my time. I'm not gonna be in a hurry. Got a little bit of fabric here that, a little bit of a little bit of shredded fabric that pushed its way through. There's a lot of little bits here, and sometimes sometimes those bits will get stuck to the fabric, and then you sew it, and then a little piece is sticking through because you're it just stuck when you went to the iron. Yeah, I got some right here. It is stuck because I went like that. Okay, so just because I back stitched this now this extra stuff now isn't going anywhere, so I can trim it out. I can trim it out. Do do do. That's done. Okay, you know what? I don't need to. I don't. I don't. I don't. I do not need to. Uh, finger pressing is fine if you're comfortable with just the finger pressing. You can stop at finger pressing if you're not comfortable. If you're not comfortable, then get it just nicely like that and just iron it. If you are using elastic, do not let the iron touch the elastic because it just change. It, the, the the elastic won't get. Well, the elastic could melt if you leave it on too long. But even just a, a couple of seconds will just kind of like make it look weird and fused. Now, if you have decided that you want a proper just piece of whatever off the top, if you skipped this step and have left this out, then you're going to take a piece of this, you're going to stick, you're going to center it, stick it in the hole, and then top stitch all the way around. I'll show you the top stitching in a second. But what you, what, what you will do is just... Um, find your center, which is easy. Just go like that. Just fold it, pinch it, pinch it, and there's your center right there. You would just put this in here, put this in here, and pin it. If you know how much, if you know what, if you know in advance what length you want, then obviously cut it to length. If you're not sure, you can leave it like this until you're done and then, oh, okay, I want it that length and, fi and then figure this, figure this part out later. So if you have skipped the elastic because you just want a regular bookmark, that this, this is the kind that will hold on to your book. You wrap it around the entire book and it's, a, it's a, also a keeper. Um, yeah, there will already be a, there, there, there will have already been a photo. So hopefully I'm just wasting my breath at this point. But so yeah, if you're gonna put in, if you're gonna put in the, the good old fabric kind that you're gonna maybe do something with, now is the time to get it in place and pin it. But we're not doing that. We're gonna do the, because the, the book the bookmark goes like this and then this is gonna wrap around in place to, to hold it onto stuff. What do I have that's big enough? I don't have anything. I'll have to get a book in a second. Yeah, it's just gonna go on like that, wrap all the way around and back again. So if you have a bigger, so this, this, is, the, this is the pen holder. This is the pen holder. If you, if you want it to fit on this book, What's this book? This is a crap book. If you want it to fit on this book, it's not gonna fit. It's not gonna go all the way around. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna line it up. You're gonna measure from here all the way around and back to the top and give yourself, you're gonna, you're gonna measure from here all the way around and back to the top and that's the length of, that, length of elastic that you will be using if you need to adjust this for your own preferences. This goes, uh, the nine inch elastic fits an A5 notebook. That's what I've sized this for, okay. We're gonna turn the uh, camera back around. I'll show you how this so, goes. I watched, I, I, I tried watching a bunch of videos. It's like, well, gee, how did they sew these on without making a big mess? And none, nobody showed how to sew it on. Every, I, I literally, I watched like six different videos going, well, none of these guys are showing how to sew these on. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to sew this on. For starters, you're gonna leave this. This is the bottom. This is your bottom. You're gonna leave this alone. This is just hanging there. You're not doing anything with it yet, okay? This. You're gonna give it a fold in half and you're gonna give it a press. You don't care about this yet. You wanna know where that center is, that's it. So I've done a nice little finger press, the line is there. That's the first step. Then you're gonna take this, 
you're going to take this and you're going to loosely I'm using a three quarter inch elastic and it is narrow enough that I can eyeball it and make sure it's well centered. Okay, that's centered, that's fine. Okay, let's just get that tucked just right. Okay, so I'm more or less centered. So now I'm gonna slide the whole works under my needle and I'm gonna go in front of that elastic. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of space so the, the, the needle there we go. The needle is here. The needle is right there, but the elastic itself is back at least a quarter of an inch. Do you see the difference? So there's the needle. There's what there's my first stitch is going to be. My elastic is just resting here so that I don't accidentally. I you do not want to sew. Like once I once I decide where I'm going to start, this can come completely out of the way. You just want to double check that you're not going to sew where you have to put your elastic in. Okay, this is actually super easy. It's, it, it is, it's super, super easy. This is just me making sure that the explanation is super, super clear. Now, I like to get as close to the edge as possible. You will want to get, you will want your, you can do whatever you want along the sides. Oh, I skipped a step. Okay, that's the last step. Bear with me, you have to fold the whole thing in half. I'm not very smart today. This is just, I went swimming earlier and I'm just super relaxed, so I'm gonna skip details. You wanna fold the entire thing in half, okay? Come down here, I mean, come down, fold the whole thing in half, start exactly where that little pouch is. Me and my skipping steps, that's okay, guys. So you wanna start here, hold that, hold, hold it, hold it, Hold it somewhat tightly because every now and again when you stitch, your machine will pull the first couple of stitches in and you don't want this step going in. Go reverse. My machine automatically goes like two stitches and then back, so it's already tacked down as well as it needs to be. Go all the way down that center line because this is just making the two pockets for your two pens. Like if you don't want pocket, if you don't care about, if you don't care about the number of pockets for your pens, you can just leave it. I tried doing this as well when I first did one of these. I did a couple of others for for a friend, and then um, Lisa said, "But I want one in Hello Kitty." She's over there with her headphones on. She can't hear me. Are you talking about? Me? Never. <laughs> okay. Okay. I folded it in half. Put my stitch down the center. That's not hard. That's not hard. I did not go all the way to the bottom because I'm gonna to be top stitching past here anyway. Just make, no matter how far you go to, you can go all the way down to the bottom if you want, just don't stitch into the elastic because you don't need to. Anyway, so now back to pulling this all the way up, just to make sure that when I slide this in, I'm starting somewhere in here, give at least a quarter of an inch on this side of the elastic and then anywhere from, anywhere from your quarter of an inch mark out, you can just start sewing. So, okay, double check, quarter of an inch, that's fine, get that out of the way. I'm not gonna back stitch because I know I'm already gonna sew over this. I like to go all the way around, go over the starting stitch and then back stitch because it just leaves less bulk in the way. So you just go the very top, if you can try for about an eighth of an inch because you do have this hole to sew up. So if you try, if you try to make your top, you can, do, you can do a wider stitch down the sides and across the bottom and it won't make a difference. And it won't make a difference in the top. It'll just look a little nicer if you can get closer to the edge because it'll hold that opening um, closed better. I'm not using a fancy stitch because this is a very narrow, small project. There's no space for it. You could use a fancy stitch if you really wanted to. You could also use what's called a blanket stitch, which um, if you're hand sewing is really awesome. Um, this is actually a really good hand sewing project because it's actually, it's actually pretty small and pretty quick. Turn it. Double check your stuff. Um, when you're coming off of a corner that's got some bulk in it, sometimes your machine does not want to push forward. So as much as it doesn't look like it, I'm actually pushing down and out with, with a decent amount of force to help make sure those first few stitches go in. And don't freak out if your first two or three stitches when you come around a corner are pretty close together because it's fairly normal as your machine tries to climb up and over because your corners will always have some bulk, pretty normal. I like to um, I like to reinforce my elastics just because you never know. You don't have to. Um, I 
There we go. And again, we're on a corner. There could be a little clunk. See how the needles? See the see the I, my my leg is off the um my leg is off the the knee lift. See how the see how the, the foot is at an angle. That means the foot has to climb up and over some bulk before it levels out. So again, um, just push. I'm not I'm not in front of the needle. Never never push like never do your pushing from in front of the needle. That's how your hand ends up under it. Always do your pushing from the side. One finger, two finger. Um, you can get in here with like a pair of tweezers or something for some extra leverage. Um, you can pull from the elastic too. You can use the elastic to pull a little bit. I don't like to, but you don't, but yeah. So these stitches, these first few stitches are actually pretty close together, but nobody's going to notice. I can even, I'll even try and hold that up for you and show you how, how that goes. You can get around that by using the trick I told you where you go up, lift your foot ever so slightly, go forward ever so slightly, put in another stitch. You can get it. You can, if you're, if having even stitches is important for your project, do the trick that I've done before where I go manually up a stitch, lift the foot ever so slightly, bring it forward the tiniest a bit, go back down, go back up, do it that way to get around your corners so that we have more control over where the stitch is placed. Okay, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going, all the way up. Okay, so don't worry about stopping and starting. Sometimes you feel like you should be able to just press that button and press that foot pedal and then just, just Hold it down for 20 minutes until you're done. Come around the corner, get a couple of stitches in, not a lot. Don't forget, you got to put that pressure and make sure you're coming around the corner past the bulk. Make sure you've got a couple of stitches past your corner because every now and again you're doing this to get it started and it goes boom, 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 and then you're too far forward. So two or three stitches, we're good, this is fine. Bring the whole thing up. Okay, don't just pull your elastic up, pull everything up. Pull everything up. So you get a nice comfortable distance. Oh, I forgot to trim that thread. Let's get that one. Let's get that while I can see it. Okay. Get yourself nice and comfortable. Life is good. Fold the whole thing under. Check out where that fold line was. If you don't see it, then just, if you don't see it, then don't be afraid to just, you already know how wide this is. So don't be afraid to get in there, get a marker and go, there it is. If you, as, as long as you have heat erasable markers, <laughs> chalk, whatever. So I'm just going to go like this. Honestly, honestly, as long as you folded that so that this side meets that side, this side meets that side, this will be in the center. Hook it, on, hook it under. It's not as difficult as it seems. Give it a little wiggle and jiggle to get it into place. Are you happy with where it's placed? Yes, I am. I'm going to do that. I'm going to run the whole thing up. Like I said, it seems difficult, and it might, I mean, the first the first time I did one, I certainly took longer than I'm taking at it now. Hold everything down. Make sure that make sure that you're not letting go of that section there. You can put a pin in. You can take your you can take a second to put a pin in. I'm not going to because I'm just fucking awesome today. No, I'm not going to because I've I've done a few of these already. So I already know how I already know that I've got it right. I already know that it's not moving. As I say that, I just let it go and it moved. Okay, maybe I'm gonna put a pin in it. <laughs> okay. So you just like let this let this let this lift back up. Get going. So so everything's fine. Okay, I know you guys aren't seeing much. Let me push this out of the way. Everything's fine because this is my finger is here holding everything up. This the elastic will stretch and move out of the way. I'm just kind of being lazy until I get the first couple of stitches in. I'm not going fast. First couple of stitches are in so I can grab the whole thing. Now, right now, my starting stitch is here, right? So I'm just gonna go all the way around. I'm gonna go all the way to that starting stitch. And because backing up more than three or four stitches at a time, this is a small project. Lift your foot, turn everything around. And now you're 180, come back. You're one, you're, not only are you a 180, but your elastic is now on the other side of the needle, so it's, it's now it's being held out of your way. Come all the way back as a reinforcing stitch. Go back over the top again. And you're done. This is now a finished. Oh my god, it looks horrible. No, wait. So let us do two little things. I'm just gonna trim the loose threads. Okay, guys, we are back at the iron because this is just the funnest place to be. This is done. Okay, so basically, now that it's done, 
you cannot damage or affect the um, interfacing if you've used interfacing. I'm just going to come, I'm just going to lift this up, or the, lift the elastic up out of the way. I'm just going to give it a quick iron with steam. Quick with steam. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just, I just like to, okay, you don't have to iron it for starters. Now just take the whole thing. Boop. See that? So it's done. It's like that. We're going to go over and drop it onto Lisa's book and make sure that it fits. And then you'll see how it looks. Okay, guys, this is not the mag. This is not the book that she's going to be using it for, but this is a, this is, a, I don't know if it is or not. Anyway, so this is a pen holder slash bookmark. So you can open it. Let's put it on the whole book first. So you just up and over and there you go. You can tug it to the top, you can tug it to the bottom, you can leave it in the center. Let's see how many pens it holds. So you put, <laughs> the pens are not gonna have to cooperate with me. So you got one pen in that side, one pen in that side. I mean, you can even, if you're holding little things, tuck a pen, whatever. Does it, it's not gonna, I mean, it's not, it's not meant to hold everything in the world, but there you go. So you got a couple of pens, you got a couple, you got a couple of pens, an A5, which is, how big is an A5? Yeah, they're, they're just, they're almost, they're about seven and three quarter inches for people who are, who don't use A5 as a measurement. So it's a nice little, nice little size. If you're using a bigger journal, then you just uh, go a little bit bigger. But yeah, so that's it. They're done. You can make these, you can make them wider and add more pens, do another line. You can make them narrower, just have enough for one pen. There's a lot of ways that you can customize these if you want. Like I said, you can make them for bigger. The one thing I will say is if you're using them for magazines or saw, like you could actually stretch this over a fairly large book. Uh, like you could stretch it over something that's larger. If you go too large, like if I tried to force it onto a soft cover like this, then it just wouldn't go. This is not gonna go on my little soft cover, cover notebook without wrecking something just because, now watch it go on like a dream. Yeah, you can't really put it on something like this because it's a soft cover. The elastic, once you stretch the elastic too far, it's not going to work because that's just obvious. But yeah, this is sized for, this was sized for an A5 notebook. This is how it fits on an A5 notebook. If you use these instructions, you'll get a, an A5 notebook size and you can stretch it. You can comfortably stretch it a little bit further. You can comfortably stretch it a little bit further to go on a slightly bigger book if that's your thing. This no, isn't really meant for soft cover books, but... This is perfect for any, this is perfect for um, journals. Um, anything, anything that you want to save, a, anything you want to save a page, you can also, the journals, workbooks, cause like you can also use it like as a bookmark. You can also go in here and just go, you know, and then you've got it like that instead. So there you go. I keep pushing it, I keep going, there you go. Look at, look at this that I'm holding up out of range of the camera where you can't see it. So this is a two pocket pen holder slash um, bookmark for A5 size notebooks and hardcover books. And I hope you like it. I hope it's a project that works for you. Um, and if you do try it, let me know what you think. If you have any questions um, or any ideas or any thoughts, I would love to hear them below. I love to chat with people. So, oh, I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be highlighting this and I put that, I shoved that away from the camera <laughs> while I leave the book in the middle of the table. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna go give this to the wife now. Anyway, like, subscribe, ring the bell. Best way to help the channel is with those thumbs up and those subscriptions. If you think, subscriptions, yeah, subscribe, subscription. If you think I've earned it, go ahead and subscribe. If you think I haven't, subscribe anyway because I'm an awesome person. Anyway, that's that for today. I hope you liked it. I hope you had a good time watching. I had a good time babbling to you guys. I have a good time. I, have, I just have a good time talking while I work. So this has been really, really beneficial all the way around. Anyway, thanks guys. Thanks for hanging out with me and I will see you again soon. Bye.